Welcome back to the shop. I've been trying to be patient with my videos and sort of string them out, uh, do smaller projects, but but have larger projects going on in the background. To uh, occasionally, at least once a month, have a a longer video, a 45 minute or an hour long video, where I come through and do a whole project or whatever. And I, I guess that's my aspiration. Uh, I don't know what's really going to happen, but that's sort of what I'm working towards, and that might be realistic or it might not be realistic. But in this particular case, I don't want to necessarily wait to get this content because I've got a lot of people to ask it about things. I had a guy um, ask me the other day, he says, you know, my father's vice, I think it was James, uh, had to ask me, he said his father's vice had a broken ear on it, and is it repairable? And I said, you know, yeah, it's repairable. However, the best method, the best means to go about repairing that is something I'm not an expert in. I'm not an expert in anything. Um, I said go to Keith Fetter, Keith Rucker, any, any number of these guys know millions, zillions of times more than I do. But what I'm trying to do is learn. And I've watched quite a few people do things and I think brazing is a, is a, is a technique that's, that's appropriate in some cases. And then there's also the nickel rods. Uh, these these are the Noma cast rods, and you use a regular, you can use AC or DC, I have an AC uh, stick welder. And I've got much more experienced stick welder. I'm not a welder, but I own a stick welder. If you look way back, I have a restoration of my, my stick welder um, that my father, my, my grandfather had given to me. But anyway, it works real well. I've ground down a slight bevel on the inside of here, and I've sort of registered this as closely as I could, and I have a piece of all thread holding it together. I'm going to plug the welder together, put some heat on this with the map gas, and then attempt to weld this back together, and I'm going to bring you back with the results, good or bad. bit of a snafu of my welder I was pulling on the I have one 220 volt outlet in the shop and that either runs the welder or the air compressor it can't run both so I just unplug one when I need the other so that's sort of just what I do and when I was plugging the air the the welder in the inside of the box had one sharp corner on it and it caught even though I have a strain relief on the cord caught the cord and punched a hole in it and arced out blew the breaker so I had to pick the welder up, put it on the workbench, disassemble it, find the short, file the corner down, tape up the spot, and anyway, it's just one thing after another. But anyway, I got it working and I used the Nomacast rods. What I had done is I had preheated this with some map gas and just got it, you know, the hotter than you'd want to touch, and then laid that down. And I, like I said, I mean, this is obvious that I'm not a welder, but, uh, but anyway, it got some pretty good penetration. It actually burned way in there. So I'm going to bring this over to the sandblaster and then uh, bring it back after I get all the slag off of that or the uh, flux, I guess you'd call it. Alright, so this is my first ever cast iron repair. That's the Noma cast rods. I heated it up. Right as I was, I let it get hot for a little bit, I heard a pop. And I can see that I've got a crack in there. A small crack that runs all the way across. And it doesn't go through. I looked on the other side and it seems to be okay on that front I'm not exactly sure how far it cracked through but it's not it's not more than 180 degrees around and it doesn't seem to be very deep and this is a wall hanger this is not going to get used this should be more than strong enough to you know maybe push it around the yard mow some stuff because I really got some serious penetration through there so so I'm going to cut my losses here and say this is good enough for this purposes so so there's definitely some I, I could have let this get hotter beforehand. Uh, I think it happened, it, ha it didn't happen on the cooling cycle. It happened on heating it up. So I obviously didn't get hot enough or whatever beforehand. Or, you know, maybe those were some cracks in there that I hadn't noticed before. I really don't know. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I saw them in there. But, but anyway, that's my first shot at repairing cast iron. I'm going to go ahead and grind this down and we'll see if I can get some shots of that and then bring it back when I think I've got it ground down enough. Alright, 
so that's the, the the grinding and now the wheel fits on there you can see that it, it rides way up in there so so that took quite a bit of grinding and uh, just to give you an idea to and to sort of tame the tame the metal shards I put a, a relatively weak magnet right next to my work just to sort of catch everything this is much easier than sweeping it up all over the shop so anyway Make no mistake, this is not perfect. This is not ideal. I'm not a welder and I'm not telling you how to do anything. This is just what I do. I, again, had some problems with my oxyacetylene and I don't know how to braze anyway. I got more comfortable stick welding in that the stick on this, when I was laying it, it laid down very nicely. It was like a drag rod, like a 7024, 7018. Uh, my issue was I had it a little hot at first had it on 115 amps and that sort of burned in and you can see that there's some it actually it ended up working out nicely because this gnomon cast is super hard uh, using the carbide bar it, in the, the time lapse you would have seen a bunch of sparks and usually these things don't throw sparks usually they just hog out chips almost like woodworking uh, but in this particular case this stuff is very hard I'm sure it, it wasn't good for these tips but anyway that's what I have them for they're consumables and um I'm pretty confident that I had created some sort of a small crack in here when I was welding this because I didn't get it hot enough to begin with. I hit it with some map gas just to sort of bring the temperature up, hoping that would help. And I, and I heard it pop while I was welding. And then on the, the after the weld, what I had done is used some, took the map gas to it and sort of heated everything up evenly again and then let it rest. And I don't know whether that helps or not, but I figured, you know, it's, it's about as much as I could do. Uh, Chucky2000 had some some stuff on how to weld this. I'm not sure how helpful it was, but uh, but anyway, moral of the story for this one is the Noma cast rods. I think sort of saved my butt here because I really didn't have a good alternative at the moment. So I'm I'm confident this is strong enough, and I'm confident that the crack didn't go all the way through, and there's enough meat here that as long as somebody doesn't use this as a hand truck, it should last. So. What this effectively means is I can move forward with this restoration. If this was a failure, this would go to the scrapyard, and, and, and I would be really unhappy if that happened. So anyway, I'm super happy that this is welded back together. I think it's going to be fine, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting the rest of this thing cleaned up, painted, assembled, and on YouTube. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and have a good night.